Forget everything you've heard about Indigenous youth. Indigenous people, like, they don't, like, succeed at school. I was not expected to be here. Sometimes Indigenous peoples are labeled as people who don't work hard. Hi, my name is There Is A Good Day Coming. My English name is Sophia Smoke, and I'm Dakota from Dakota Plains Ochpetu Nation. Welcome to Winnipeg. Today we are here at the Canadian Museum for Human Rights to talk about Indigenous futures with three special guests. Beautiful view on the city. My name is Kenny Johnson. I'm 16. I live in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. Oath, universe, you know. One thing that brings me joy is definitely my community, whether that be my family or my friends or my swim team. I love swimming. It's one of my like, biggest passions. Like when you're swimming, everything outside of the pool just kind of doesn't exist. I'm just trying to live my life. I'm not trying to like force my transgenderness onto you. I just want to be able to go and get in my swimsuit without having people like look at me and giving me weird looks. I just want to hop in the pool. Like I don't want your judgment. <laughs> don't be afraid to be yourself. I spent so long being afraid to be myself. If people don't accept you, for who you are, then they're not the right people to be around. Bonjour, I'm the Indigenous people of Indigenous Cause, Namago Shindo Dem. Hi, my name is Sarah Fontaine Sinclair. I'm from Winnipeg, Manitoba, and I am 16 years old. I love to play the flute in my spare time. I, I take lessons and I play in an orchestra. I am a part of an ethics bowl. It's kind of like a debate club, but more collaborative. And I am part of environmental action committees. Yeah, I do fun things. <laughs> One stereotype that I don't like is that sometimes Indigenous peoples are, are labeled as people who don't work hard or who don't work for what they get in life. It's so wrong because we work really hard for the opportunities that, that we want to get. My dream for my future is seeing a world where everyone is kind. People having open conversations with one another, even if we disagree with things, I think that learning from one another without shutting down ideas is something that I really want to see in my future. I'm Dale Turcotte, I'm 15 years old and I'm from Winnipeg. One thing I love about being Indigenous is it helps me with my comedy. We are underratedly funny. One of the things that brings me joy is the feel of a basketball. <coughs> One thing that I love about Rossberg House <laughs> is that you're welcome no matter who you are. I've been coming here since I was eight years old. Yes, that was me. It, <laughs> I felt like I was at home every time I stepped into this building. Today they're making spaghetti. I've been here for a year and a half as a worker, coming up two years in August. Uh, laptops. A lot of this city is murder, drug dealing, and a lot of nonsense and BS. So I feel like places like this help drive them away from it and distract their minds from doing other things that they could be doing. Without this place, I, my childhood would have been a very, very different story. Just because you grew up in this neighborhood appreciates you. Just because you've done this or just because you've been through that, it doesn't mean nothing. Nothing can stop you. Perfect. All right, so first of all, what are some stereotypes about Indigenous youth that you guys would like to smash? I would say that all we do is get handouts, you know? Like, I know a lot, a lot of people who are working, you know, working to get what they need and what they want. We're not all just relying on the government 
type thing. We're working to get what we what we have, and I think we'll be a step closer um, to justice and equality if that stereotype is gone. Yeah, I would probably go with indigenous people. Like they they don't they don't like succeed at school. Like they'll like they'll drop out. like all of them are like high school dropouts or don't do anything after high school. Um, and I mean, we don't have a ton of indigenous role models who are like, like, you know, successful and like went to a bunch of school. But I mean, a lot of them do like a lot of indigenous people, indigenous people can do anything they want, obviously, because anyone can do anything they want. I mean, like my mother, she's indigenous and she's like one of the smartest people I know. Totally. Um, and I think that, that just adding on to you, I think that a lot of indigenous indigenous people or, or non-indigenous peoples don't realize how, how hard we work as indigenous peoples to, to make sure that our voices are heard. Um, so I think that it's so important that people realize how how determined we are and how how much how much hard work we put into the things that we do. Mm-hmm. Okay, so according to a lot of our answers, I understand that we all feel a little underestimated as Indigenous youth. Have you guys ever experienced something like that? How do you think we are underestimated? I think that we're underestimated in a lot of ways because of that, of not having a good foundation um, of non-Indigenous peoples knowing how we think and our perspectives on the world. It's not fun being underestimated because you feel like you're being held back from your, your, like, the top of your potential. But one thing I do know is when all the fighting for equality and not being underestimated is done, we're going to shine. So why do you guys think it's important for Canadians to see Indigenous people experiencing joy in the media? I think it's essential because um, in schools, we focus a lot on the darker parts of history with Indigenous peoples. And while that's so important to, to touch upon and, and to, to put importance on, um, it's, it's important for us to see, see that Indigenous peoples, we, we still find joy. We're not, we're, not, we're not victims as sometimes our school system paints us. Mm-hmm. Um, we, we can find so much joy in, in our world. Yeah, I think that's actually a great point. And I think that we need to show Canadians that we, about the joys of Indigenous people because there is so much joys. There's so much joy in Indigenous people. I mean, we have fun, we laugh, we, we talk about the hard stuff, but you know, like, we are so much more than what has happened in the past. Yeah, I like what you guys both said, kind of like, we're not just victims, we're people too. Yeah, Dale. Um, a lot of the things you see about Indigenous people is, you know, in the news, either locked up, dead, or just putting us as like victims, or the enemy Mm -hmm. Um, and it's important for other Canadians to see joy because it's not just death, murders, um, violence and crime, it's there is a lot of upsides. All right next up, do you guys have a favorite joke? I'm not very funny. (laughs) Okay so I have like good jokes and then I have really bad jokes so my favorite like bad dad joke is what do you call a fish with no eyes? Oh, psh. Hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> um, I like a lot of music puns. Okay. So, and, and then I also love Star Wars. <laughs> so, <laughs> so like when I'm in orchestra sometimes, I'll be like, I, I sit next to the oboe and I'll be like, oboe one, <laughs> we need you. You're our only hope. <laughs> okay, that's killer combo. A lot of my jokes are not CBC Kids friendly. So <laughs> um, I, would, I would go with a, a simple dad joke. Um, do you know why dad brings an extra sock to the golf course? Tell me why. Just in case he might get a hole in one. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> the, <laughs> the, the extent of my humor. All right. What do you guys think a just future looks like for indigenous people? Are you hopeful for that future? Why or why not? I think a just future looks Um, like Indigenous peoples and non-Indigenous peoples learning from each other, having education around Indigenous perspectives in schools at an early age so that we can have that foundation to create a a better community in Canada around Indigenous peoples, supporting Indigenous peoples and uplifting our voices. Um, and, And I see a lot of hope in that. I think our generation has so much power um, and we know so much about our world. We know so much about, about the potential that we, or the things that we need to bring to our world to make change. Um, and so my generation gives me a lot of hope for, for building that beautiful future. 
If you guys had a megaphone, what is one thing that you would say to the world? Stop being so judgy. <laughs> I get judged every single day of my life, like all the time. It's whether it's just because I'm indigenous or because I'm openly trans and LGBTQ and and people just need to stop judging. Like take a chill pill and relax. <laughs> like I'm not going around being like boo left handed people. Like <laughs> like honestly, like we are all human beings. It doesn't make that big of a difference what we look like, who we love, you know, like what pronouns we prefer. So what I would say into a megaphone is be empathetic, be kind. Um, I think that, that our world needs so much more kindness. We have, like, the, the beauty that we have in, in Winnipeg is that we, we see so much kindness, but it's not, it's not used as often as it should be. Um, I think that, that, that open conversation needs to happen so much more to learn from each other. I'm a part of a, a club called Ethics Bowl where we, it's kind of like debate, but it's more collaborative where we, we don't destroy the opponent, but we, we, um, we talk as a group. We, we compete in a way where we come to a conclusion together. Um, and I think that, that if we had more, more um, training, like Ethics Bowl gives me and some of my friends, um, we would have so many so much more progress happening in Canada. Yeah. Bale. If I were to say anything to a microphone, I would tell them to not give up and that anything is possible because a lot of people wouldn't like expect to see me here. Like I'm working with CBC Kids right now. That's, <laughs> um, I've worked with United Way. I, I was working a full job at 13. Like I, I was not expected to be here, but here I am. I didn't give up. There's a, you have to be positive. Because if you stay with the positive mindset, anything's possible. Yeah, that's the story of our people. Never giving up. Dream big. Where do you see yourself in 10 years? There are so many things that I want to do, and I know that I can't do all of them, but I think the main thing um, is that I want to make a difference. I want to make a difference in the world in, in a big or small way, but I want to I wanna leave my mark on the world in, in a meaningful way, um, whether that's in music or in politics or in just having conversations with people. I think, yeah, I just want to leave a, a meaningful mark. I'm hoping to see myself as an athlete, um, but if that doesn't, work out then I want to be a public figure in some way whether it's global or just in the country or just in my city um, I want to be a name and a face that people could look up to and I want people to be like I want to be like him when I grow up I would like to be happy in 10 years that's my goal in life you know to be happy I want to continue being an advocate for LGBTQ plus two IA rights you know I've it made so much change already in such a short amount of time. I mean, like I, I saw my friend finally be able to switch over to the side that aligns with the gender and competitive swimming because I had done it first, and I almost started crying because of it. And I just, I just, I want the world to be like a better place. Can I just say that that this panel has brought me so much hope for our future? <laughs> so much like, joy. So much joy. So, yeah. so much joy and hope for, for the our future. future. For the future. Like yeah. like we are such amazing people. <laughs> like I think that like this is our future right here. Yeah. And it's looking beautiful. Yeah. And there are more of us out there. Like, exactly. We're not the only people that look at the world this way and hope for the same things that we hope. So That's I'm definitely I'm excited to see it. Yeah. yeah, I love that. There is more of us out there. I love it.